You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. Yes. Yeah, man. We, yes. We sitting here with the Prince family, man. We pouring live from H Town, man. You know, it's a lot of things, you know, that was said. A lot of people got their own opinions, a lot of speculation, you know, uh, a lot of Instagram hype. But ain't nothing like, you know, hearing it from the horse's mouth and hearing, hearing, you know, hearing the real deal of what happened. OG. Oh, hold yeah. On, hold on, hold on. <laughs> First and foremost, man, before we even get started, you know, yes. I want to say rest in peace to uh, take off. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to his family. Shout out to, to the whole QC. To the whole QC, to all his loved ones. You know what I mean? We we want to show our respects on that aspect first. You know, when I got the call from you, you know, OG, you know, we was a little reluctant to do the interview because, you know, somebody lost their life. You know, it was a sensitive situation. So, you know, we talked and then when you when you alerted me that you had sat down with, you know, P from QC and, you know, everybody saw things eye to eye and, you know, that really had, you know, it was like, okay, well, cool. As long as you, if you see eye to eye with, the, you know, the people that's, that's most close to them and y'all got everything figured out, then, okay, then you can come speak your truths. You know what I'm saying? Because that side of the family and, and this side of the family is on the same accord. So um, with that being said, you know, Let's get into this interview, man. I'm yeah, yeah, and I would, I would like to also, man. Uh, I want to echo everything that was said. You know, <clears throat> we would like to extend and send our condolences. You know what I mean, as well, because and and definitely to take our mother. You know what I mean, because uh, I put her at the top of the list because it's an unnatural thing to lose your kid. You know what I mean. I felt all kinds of pain. I'm losing my mother, my father, you know, brothers, sisters, cousins, best friends, and different things. But you know, to lose your child is a whole different, you know, a whole different kind of pain. So, you know, I sympathize with that to the fullest because that's what you call unnatural. You know what I mean? They supposed to bury us, not us burying them. Absolutely. Now, uh, Mike. Mike Prince, I'm going to ask you a question. You was there, and, you know, a lot of people seen you trying to de-escalate the situation. Um, and then things just went left. What happened, Mike? Well, it really, it really wasn't a situation to de-escalate because it really wasn't, it wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it looked like it looked, but it really wasn't that type of situation. You know what I'm saying? That's why I even asked myself that today. Like, it wasn't even there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, we from the cuts. You know when certain things are what it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, and because you had so many years of looking and seeing and feeling and dealing. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't even that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, it was really a, a beautiful night. You know what I'm saying? We all family. We enjoying. Everybody kicking it. You know what I'm saying? It, um... It wasn't a situation that it turned out to be. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, me saying I'm de-escalating, I'm basically just telling nephew, like, hey, it ain't worth talking about. He's like, man, you want to talk about basketball. It ain't, leave it alone. Stop talking about it. Period. Like, stop talking about basketball. You don't want to talk about basketball. Stop talking. It wasn't about no dice game. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about no gambling. It wasn't about none of the things that the media and all these you know, we call the media whores just trying to capitalize and, and, and draw a story that wasn't there. Because we had already been outside a period of time before that other conversation started. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the homies, you know, everybody went outside to smoke. You know what I'm saying? We just sit back kidding. Then they went, you know, we going to talk. They talk basketball. You know what I'm saying? Just nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't that type of situation or that type of energy to where you would feel like something had escalated to where it was just built prop. So okay, so to the people that say, okay, the Prince family been doing this for years. Been bringing people down. They've been hosting them. You know, nothing like this ever happened. 
You feel what I'm saying? What 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 about the people that feel like still nothing should have happened? Cause they was they was with the you know they was with the Prince family, and the Prince family is well respected. Nothing should have happened. Yeah. What do you say to that? What I would what I would say to that is, you know, I have a track record, man, and the Prince family have a track record of thirty plus years of. You know what I mean? Honoring and 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 loving on our guests and, and being with our guests and no shit like this never happened. But here's the thing, and this is what people don't understand. Uh, we ain't never had nobody to attack us. <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know, when when a man attack a situation with a weapon, then you know, it become a playing field where you know, any and everything goes. So that's what we're dealing with right here, and that's the root of this situation. And he didn't attack the Prince family, but he attacked, you know, people that we know, and it was totally unnecessary, you know what I mean, for you to attack a man with a weapon. Because what that's going to do is put a man in a position where he want to protect himself. And that's what, that was the root of igniting this gunplay. But to clarify it real quick so they can understand, we're not talking about takeoff attacking nobody. No, not at all. Just so they, they can yeah, understand. No, not, not at all. Not, not takeoff and, and, and not nobody from Houston, you know, attack nobody until, you know, the homie that was with them would take off them, whatever his name may be. You know, he's he giving all kinds of statements on this police report we have so we can read his name and everything because he put himself in a position where uh, he's cooperating and telling a lot of different lies so we may as well shine the light on the real root to the issue which is which is this homie you know what I mean in this paperwork so as everybody can see on the video you know this dude without having a green light from from uh, offset, nobody told this man to, you know what I mean, attack somebody and get you know, a Quavo. I mean, you know what I mean. Nobody gave him a, a green light to attack, you know, a, a five-two guy. You know, this this a big nigga. You know what I mean. So I guess he felt like, you know, the little homie is somebody he can just hit and knock out and different things like that. And it it was a wrong thing to do, man. And it was an embarrassing thing to do. Because it was, you know, like Mike said, it was so unnecessary. It wasn't even that type of atmosphere. You know, y'all talking about a basketball game. You know what I mean? A, a two-on-two. Playing a two-on-two. And now you can turn a misdemeanor into a felony. I'm going to say this. A lot of people seen the video. It was a few seconds. And Junior, they seen you walking by. Um, we understand that, uh, you know, Quavo, take off. They was down here with y'all. Uh -huh. But they seen you walking by. He's he's laying on the ground. You got Mike bending down, and they seen you walking by. What, what, what took place there? This is the crazy thing about the video, right, is one scenario is that they see Mike on the ground trying to help take off. But in the video, Mike was right behind me. People didn't peep that. People think that I'm the one who had a voice. I mean, I'm the one who was speaking in the video, but I wouldn't. If you go back and look at the video, Mike is walking right behind me. They took three seconds of a situation where I was caught on video and turned it into what they wanted it to be. But in our actuality... We had been there for a while. Mike was following me so we can go to the restroom so he can uh, wash the blood off his hands and so he can enlighten me to what transpired because I wasn't even out there when this transpired. I was inside paying a bill. So I had no knowledge of what had transpired outside. As I'm walking to the I had just got done paying the bill. As I'm walking to the door, I hear gunshots, and then I also hear bullets coming through the glass. So I got out the way because I was almost at the door. So I ended up getting out the way. And sadly, what had 
taking place, it taking place. But in that three second clip, it was me and Mike walking to the restroom so he can wash the blood off his hands and so he can enlighten me to what transpired outside. It was rumors that after all this occurred, you was the one that took Quavo and them to the hospital. Y'all still was together after that. I stayed with- I stayed with Quavo. We stayed out there probably like two or three hours together before we all parted ways and made sure each other was cool. Like, me and him stayed out there. Like, uh, one other person pulled up, but it was me and him that stayed out there for hours after this transpired, so. Yeah, so it's just interesting how, you know, one can take a three-second lie, you know what I mean, and, and contaminate you know, a bunch of uh, uh, damn fools that believe anything that they see. And when in, in actuality, as you can see, these two was with Quavo, you know what I mean, from beginning and end to end. They dropped him off. They never left his side, you know, because here's the thing. Takeoff is not the only one got hit that night, you know what I mean? A friend of, of ours daughter got hit in the head, you know, so... Somebody could have been mad about that and wanted to come back and, and do some things. So they was there with, with the homie. And whenever he uh, decided to speak, he going to validate everything we're saying. Quavo, you know what I mean? Because he know he was never abandoned. He know he was never disrespected. He know every time he have came to Houston, it's been nothing but love and respect. That's why he came so many times. When, when, when you hear Houston, you hear mob ties. And some people would say that it's some type of protocol for people to check in when they come to the city. And this coming from a person like me and Gil, we ain't never check in when we came to the city. So is there supposed to be a certain protocol for people to check in? No. You know, and I'll begin with me, and then he can speak, and they can speak for the other generation. But I'm a never, you know what I mean? We don't have time for no sucker shit like that. You know, now a lot of people from the different police departments and all these different people want to insinuate like we extorting people. They have to check in. Man, that ain't no money in that shit. I, I wouldn't have. We got, I got more money than I could spend, right? So I don't want to say, go give. You, what, that shit ain't going to work. It ain't going to turn out right because... Real niggas ain't gonna have that no way. You know, check in, check in for what? But but on the flip side, there is uh, what you call a, a a brownie point to be able to have us as friends. You know what I mean? I don't want to impose or force myself to, to uh, embrace nobody. But by the by the same token, those that I respect and I befriend, there is a difference coming into the city as our friend versus by yourself. You know what I mean? And the difference is we are respected. You know, we are respected and everybody with us, we're going to demand that they be respected. But it ain't no uh, trying to extort or trying to force. We don't need that. <laughs> That's fake love. All right. We don't want that. Because it seemed like, and why is it that? A high percentage of things that take place that might go wrong in this city, why is mob ties and rap a lot always blamed? Man, you know, all of my life, damn near in this game, that's been the case. You know what I mean? It's almost like I, I view uh, I view our brand, our, our brand like a, a Nike brand in the streets. You know, everybody wear it. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's something proud to, to wear and feel good about it. But, you know, all of those, everybody's, and I've and I done a post, say everybody with us ain't one of us. You know what I mean? Everybody wear that hat, wear that attire. You know, don't, you can't give them to me. You know, you can't give all these people that wear Nike and, and may go shoot up, bang, bang, or whatever, in, in Nike attire. Y'all don't try to give it to Phil Knight, whatever that dude name. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So don't, don't try to give me that shit, but they do. You know what I mean? And uh, I learned to accept the things that I can't change, change the things that I can, and have the wisdom to know the difference. You know what I mean? Because, you know, with us, 
and with the success that we have attained for so many years brings about uh, a certain jealousy and envy and all that kind of shit with it, man, until, you know, it's uh, like a snowball effect where you really can't stop it. You know what I mean? You know, I give you a story my 114-year-old great-grandmother gave me. She said, people are going to say what they want to say. You just don't let it be so. So I live that life of just not letting it be so. This episode of Million Dollars for Every Game is also brought to you by the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum. Return to L.A. on Sunday, February 5th at mm. 5 p.m. Pacific time. More than 20 of the best NASCAR Cup Series drivers will compete on a quarter-mile track. Built in less than 50 days, kicking off the NASCAR 75th season, the Clash feature pre-race concert by Cypress Hill and a race break performance from Wiz Khalifa. Right now, you can get your tickets at NASCAR. NASCARClash.com NASCARClash.com Get out there and get your tickets Hey listen and make sure y'all uh, tune in Because you got the OG there Cypress Hill right Cypress Hill doing his yes. thing And then you got the pre-break Concert by Wiz Khalifa So you know he gonna be in there Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow Doing his thing So tell them where they could get the tickets at One at more time NASCARClash.com NASCARClash.com. Yes. Make sure y'all go there, check out all the races, check out everything they got going on, check out the concert. You got the OG Cypress Hill, right? Yes. And you got the race car break by a concert by Wiz Khalifa. So it's going to be a great time, man. Check that out. Let me ask y'all a question. What's the, from, from the Prince family standpoint, what's the worst What's what is what is the when you when you get into feelings? What's the worst feeling that y'all had that from what happened that night? Like what's what's the what's the what what eats at y'all the most of what happened that night? Other than take off, yeah, losing his life. I don't. Yeah, let me just say this. I don't think uh, I heard you say other than that, but that's that's at the top. You know what I mean? He, he lost his life. Other than that, the worst thing to me is this clown that came here. I, I wish he, I wish he wouldn't have never came with uh, with Quavo. I, w- I wish he wouldn't have never brought this nigga into Houston because he can't think. You know what I mean? He, this whole root of everything happening is from his actions. And to be frank, honest about the situation, I wish that bullet would have hit him instead of takeoff because he was the one that deserved that. You know what I mean? Takeoff didn't deserve that. You know, so that's the worst thing that I could think of because if he don't make that move, then the night is everybody still here and live to see another day and you know what I mean? It's 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 bubbly and lovey dubby. Right. You know. And I and I understand that, you know, yeah. the takeoff situation is the most important yeah. thing, you know what I mean? But I'm saying, you know, other than that, from 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 the print standpoint, it might be like that that it ever even was possible that it could happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah no, real clearly. And uh, you know, as I said, man, the root. You know, everybody, even the police department, you know, even the police department want to get around the root of what really happened. Now, there's a law that goes on around the world where if me and you go rob a bank and, you know, the police or somebody is shooting, trying to protect that bank, right, and, and hit some innocent person, who you think get that charge? The person that shot that innocent person or the root of the situation that we're robbing that bank. The root. Okay. That's what we're dealing with right here. You know what I mean? This this dude is the root of this shit. You know what I mean? And and from what I done read in this police report, you know, where he's, you know, um, telling on everything he can tell on jazz. And you know what I mean? He moving on to say he was trying to be robbed. And, man, don't nobody... Who want to rob? You know, them little dudes, the last thing they would have done was violated and tried to rob Quavo. 
me and Quavo and walked in the hood of Fifth Ward, me, him, and Jazz by ourselves in the whole hood. And when, by the time we hit a few corners, we had 100 plus walking with us. You know what I mean? So he know firsthand. Well, no, that's like a lie to justify that dumb shit that he done. And, you know, that's, that's just the root of the shit, man. I, if I could change it, I would change it. If I was God, I would have reached and grabbed and stopped the bullet from hitting the loved one because I, I love him that much. You know what I mean? But I was in a bed sleep. Just to, um, just to elaborate on that, man, um, I think like I spoke before and said that the biggest thing is just me thinking about that whole night and that whole situation to where, like you guys spoke on, how so many speak about the family, how one should have been controlled, why it happened, this and that and another. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're not God, you know what I'm saying? But we believe in him. and We don't fear no man, you know what I'm saying? Because we follow him. First and foremost, you know, and personally, I asked myself, was it anything else that could have been done to manicure that situation? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we so used to molding and, 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 and the respect, you know what I'm saying, to where we didn't have no doubt that it wasn't going to be no disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't move like that. No one in association or affiliation with us move with disrespect, you know what I'm saying, me? So we all family, you know what I'm saying, me? <laughs> and just to see the way that my family is being betrayed, you know what I'm saying, behind someone that we care about and love also as brothers, that's the disrespect, you know what I'm saying? That's why I want to enlighten the world and let them know y'all got y'all got it messed up. You know what I'm saying? Cause we messed up about this too. You know what I'm saying? And all respect to take off family. You know what I'm saying? It's loved ones. We love them and respect them too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like one hour was took that night. You know what I'm saying? Man? Like, bro say. Behind this clown, man. We don't move like that. You know what I'm saying? When we say move, we move. When one leg move that way, the other leg gonna move that way. We don't have no out of bounds clown shit going on in our family. This nigga came down here and he was out of line. And he stepped out of bounds, man. Without permission. Quavo told me, after I told him, I said, nephew, stop talking about basketball. Leave it alone. He said, Unc, you right. Let's go. Because I don't want to do nothing to one of these niggas before I do something to one of these niggas. This dude took upon himself to go trying to violate people that didn't violate nobody. That was sitting there humble. Wasn't exchanging words. Wasn't being disrespectful. He just decided he wanted to be a bully that night and prove something to someone I don't know. Cause I, probably because he's the biggest guy out there. I don't know what it was. But we started walking off. You know what I'm saying? Then nobody in the family violate nobody. A man is going to defend himself. So I can't tell a man not to do that. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't even see that coming. You know, as soon as he made his move and struck an individual, I'm like, what you doing? But everything happened like that. And I didn't see no gun in his hand. Because I would have spoke on that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see that till clippings after the fact that he's already standing there. So he already had his mind on something that shouldn't have been. You see what I'm saying? But it wasn't something that we could control, see coming, stop, or none of that because it wasn't one of ours. You're not of us because if you was of us, it wouldn't have never happened. You stepped out of bounds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and If they listen to that tape real good, they can hear the little homie. They can hear the little homie saying, man, if you took that wrong, I apologize. This is, this is what the little homie was, was telling Quavo. Man, I apologize if you took that wrong. I was just talking about basketball. You know, how humble can you be? After, after apologizing like that, a nigga going to hit him with a pistol? 
Hey, man, you know, like I say, under no circumstances did takeoff deserve what he got. But boy, look at here. That other clown, hey, man, that's where it's at. You keep, uh, people keep talking about, you know, and I'm just speaking on it because it's, they keep attaching it to your name and your brand and what y'all build. Keep talking about Dice King. Whether it's in this situation, whether it's in this uh, Duke the Jeweler situation, uh, people keep speaking of that. And to Duke the Jeweler, rest in peace to him and condolences to his family. I don't know the brother, but I know he came down here. Yeah. Things transpire. I don't have no knowledge of it, but to keep talking about this Dice game type shit. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Can y'all elaborate on Dice game when it's tied to y'all? I mean, I know people were associating me with that Duke the Jeweler situation because I went to Labusi pool party and he happened to be there and he happened to be standing on me. I mean, right next to me. The truth is, I never met him before. I had no idea who he is. I didn't even know he was a jeweler until after his passing. And then the night of that game isn't the night that he got killed. He got killed leaving Boosie concert the next night because somebody tried to rob him. So, you know, the internet play internet games. But this is a situation with a dude that I didn't even know. I ain't know his name. I had no knowledge of him. I, I ain't know he was from Chicago. I ain't know he was a jeweler until social media started trying to point a finger because he was standing next to me. And, that, and it's just unfortunate that something transpired after another dice game. But neither incidents had anything to do with a dice game. Yeah, and you know, you know, niggas gonna gamble, man. You know what I mean? It's, you know, all around the world, you know, people gamble, people do different things, man. And that shit was happening before we were born. It's gonna be happening after we die. You know what I mean? But like, I know a little something concerning that situation too. And you know, from what I understand, it wasn't even no robbery. The man had all his jewelry on. You know what I mean? So that's some Chicago business. You know what I mean? And I, I, I hate for people to blame shit on, on, on my niggas here in, in, in Texas, in H-Town, that they ain't even got no fingerprints on none of that. You know what I mean? But they quick to try and blame it on us first, and then they'll take it everywhere else. But that shit ain't real. What is the, um, what is the meaning, the definition of mob ties? Movement of bosses together in elevated structure. Mm. Ain't that powerful? I never, I never knew. No, I never heard it yeah. that way. Basically, our goal is say that one more time. Movement of bosses mm -hmm. together in elevated structure. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, all this here, all these, <laughs> you know what I mean? All these related, you know, all this here, these, these bosses. What is this here? That's, all that's, boss brands. That's Drake. Uh huh. Carl Crawford, 1501, that's Megan Boss. Uh -huh. Mob Ties, you know, Finesse, Honeycomb, and then the one and only. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one and only, the, the motherfucker that broke the doors down. Yeah. Oh, good. Absolutely, man. But it's, you know, I, I love that name, man, and I want to I wanna talk about that for a minute because... You know, the enemy want to make belittle us to gain, gain conversation and, and all that small shit. And that ain't what I put in him from a boy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? From, from a babe. I didn't put no, no all that weak shit in him. You know what I mean? He has an entrepreneurial mind. This is something oh that he dreamed. You know what I mean? He'd been dreaming, blood, sweat, and tears went into this name, and it wasn't on no negative bullshit that they try to paint the portrait on, you know. So now you know the move you, you know the know the meaning. You know what I mean? A movement of bosses. You know what I mean? A movement of bosses. If you don't remember the rest, just remember a movement of bosses. And if you qualify, let's ride. Now, you know, jazz, how do how you know jazz not here to speak, but how do jazz feel? You know, knowing they was coming down here for him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, jazz man was heartbroken, man, because, you know, Quavo, them came down 
because Jazz was having a, a surprise Jazz Prince Day. The city of Houston was giving him his day. And Quavo and Jazz is, you know, like tight, tight. You know, so he was coming down to su- support his brother and, uh, you know, be there for him on a, on a moment like that. So you can only imagine, you know, you know how he feel. And, and the other piece was, you know, he even tried to get him to leave with him because Jazz was, he wasn't there when everything took place, but he was there earlier. And he, tried, he asked Quavo to leave with him, but the homies wanted to stay and hang out, you know, which was, you know, a noble thing to do, you know, not thinking all this shit. Niggas like to party, like to have fun. Uh, uh, so he, he decided to stay, but he was heartbroken by this shit, man. You know, he was heartbroken and all the way up until this day. How do you, uh, it was a lengthy uh, police report. Yeah. Um, by the guy that was mainly involved with this situation and, uh, how do you feel about things that were said in that police report? Man, you know, if uh, if Gila would be so nice to just read some of this police report, just some of the things so the people won't think I'm making up words, you know, it, I think it would be helpful. All right, let me see. So Willie Bland, who admitted to firing a weapon at the scene, he stated that he's seen the two males he – had identified as Joshua and Watkins throughout the evening that he had seen them with guns. He believed that Joshua said something and began pulling the gun, so he reached and punched him. He thought that males were about to try and rob Quavo. Now, now if we can just stop right there, and, and let me just explain that little piece how I feel about that bullshit. Now, clearly... This bland dude and gave a police report that he seen these two guys with guns earlier. But these are the same two guys that he decided he was going to punch with his gun out and hit them with a gun. What do you think going to happen? You know what I mean? You, you, you seen these niggas with guns and you're going to hit them? You know, these people, these same guys that he's talking about, man, if any enemy would have came in their direction, they'd have had some problems. But as you can see, this clown saw that and decided, I'm going to I'm I'm try them two guns with my one. And then he, he tell a blatant lie about they getting ready to rob Quavo. And Lord knows if anybody, any of them people would have tried to rob or touch Quavo, it was going to be some, some real problems. So that's just not true. You want me to finish reading? Yeah, yeah, might as well. Let's let them know how. Cause he, this dude, here's what he's doing, uh, Gilly. This dude right here is running back in Atlanta getting on the real niggas. So we have to get him a million dollars worth of game, let them know. Now, this is what he's doing out here in, in Houston. Uh-huh. Now, if he's running up under y'all then, and, and you embrace him, that's on y'all. But I can't, I can't hide it from him. I want him to know. <laughs> yeah. And I know y'all them kind of people, so let's, let's let them know. Um, uh, he believed it was probably Cameron Joshua shooting at him so he began shooting at Cameron Joshua video showed that Joshua ran back inside the bowling alley but there is no video evidence showing a firing a gun now just this little piece of, 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 of who he's saying just when he put my son's name in his mouth from right here a large black male with the victim's group later identified as Willie Bland, is seen either striking or... No, no, no. Let's go to Paul where he say who gave him a gun and all that kind of stuff. Well, Willie Bland further stated he initially obtained the gun that he discharged from Jazz Prince, who was hosting the group, including Willie Takeoff and Quavo, while they visited Houston. Willie stated that he had asked Jazz for a gun, and Jazz provided him with one that was in the truck. Now, listen at that. Now, Quavo, as I stated, is Jazz's brother. So, of course, Jazz don't mind making sure, you know, the homie got some heat because we understand that what goes on, right? But uh, now you got this clown 
You know, and I don't know how it ended up in his hand, you know, but it ended up in his hand. This clown is saying somebody want to rob him that gave him a gun. Why would you give a man a gun and try to rob him? <laughs> you know what I mean? This shit just don't add up and make sense, man, is, is what I'm getting to. And I'm just trying to get people to, to realize how big a damn fool this dude here he is, and now he's ratting all over the place and, and, and ran back and, you know, the bus, bus shots and ran to the airport and ran his ass back immediately. You know what I mean? He didn't care nothing about the homie take off. As soon as he done that, he went straight to the airport and, and tore ass home. But I'm going to leave you with all this paperwork, and you can look at it later on. <laughs> Don't leave me with this shit. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leave you with all that, all this rag shit. <laughs> Y'all going to Atlanta, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's what I love about million dollars worth the game because you know what I mean. We ain't about that fake shit, and we want to let it be known, whatever it is. You know what I mean? You know, let that shit. Definitely, when it comes to these rats, we can't protect them kind of individuals. I'm gonna you know? say this: like, I think we we living in a town. In the hip hop culture, where is though? A lot of us, um, as we move around, we got to be more level minded. Yeah. We got to use security. Uh, we got to communicate with each other. And I think we just got to be more respectful of one another. And we got to be thankful for the opportunities that hip hop has provided us with. Um, there's a lot of brothers out here on the ground that wish they had the opportunities. A lot of dudes is taking penitentiary chances every day to take care of their family, to take care of their kids. But then there's a lot of brothers that don't have to no more. And they out, you know, they in a better situation. And I just want to say this to a lot of people, man. Uh, if you ain't a street nigga, don't wait till you get some rap money, get millions of dollars and become one. Mm. Because what's happening is, you know, and this ain't got nothing to do with this situation right yeah. here. But what I'm seeing in the rap culture is that a lot of dudes was in the neighborhood only thing they did was rap. They even played sports, they rap. But as soon as they got the millions and they got a bunch of dudes that's in the street that now going to listen to them because they want to go for the ride, they want to get taken care of, they want to get broke off, now they become this ultimate street nigga. Uh, they talk to people crazy. They carry themselves crazy. They on social media talking gangster shit. Any real dude that ever operated outside of the law, did penitentiary time, or didn't go to the penitentiary, was in the street game, ducking the police, ducking the stick-up man, ducking the killers, ducking all the bullshit, they not trying to be no street nigga. They waiting for the, 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 the nearest opportunity to get out the game. The real cats that really go through this shit because they know what they up against. So why do y'all guys wait till y'all get millions of dollars and want to be tough-ass street niggas? Yeah. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Like, we, we get to the point where it's though this shit is just getting out of control, man. You know what I mean? Everything ain't got to be no aggressive shit. Everything ain't got to be tough. Everything ain't got to go to the internet as soon as some shit happen. You know, mm -hmm. if you, you know, a lot of, lot of brothers that go through stuff in the game got each other number or you got the manager number. You know somebody in the camp. If you out here, you doing your thing in the music game and somebody in every camp that you know or you got somebody that knows somebody in the camp where y'all can make a call Y'all can sit there and really talk on some real grown man shit. Yeah. And let me say this, man. To all the rappers out here, all the athletes that's made it, do me a favor, man. Stop acting like y'all regular niggas, man. You're not. You made it out. You're worth an asshole full of money. You are no longer a regular nigga out here, man. So you got to protect yourself as so. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers want to want to make it out the ghetto and understand how hard it is to make it out the ghetto and then act like they regular niggas. No. When 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 you got a certain special ability that you able to do out here and change your whole family, everybody around you, the way they living and them they circumstances, but you still want to act like a regular nigga. It'll catch up to you, man. Because you're not regular, so you can't do regular shit no more. That's just the reality of this shit. Because God put those type of blessings on you that wherever you go, motherfuckers know you. 
wherever you go, you somebody. You cause pandemonium. You, so you're not regular no more. We, you, so you can't act like you regular. You can't carry shit like you regular. Because it only take one time for some not regular shit to happen, and you're done. So I just want to put that out there, too, to all the motherfuckers that's out here that's eating and that's making it. Because I be seeing athletes from my city who you watching these niggas on TV, but then you seeing these niggas chill down North Philly. Yeah. For what? No, that's real. You spent your whole fucking life in North Philly. That, that's, that's what you call a million dollars, what the game y'all giving. But that's why it's also important, you know, even though people got this... This fucked up check in situation, you know what I mean? All twisted, but relationships is valuable, man. Worth more and than important. Money. The, the right ones, you know what I mean? They're valuable and important. And, and me, you know what I mean? When I travel, I, I've been doing this shit for a long time. And, you know, anybody wise would want to know how you was able to do this and be successful as long as you was able to do it. You know, I was always that kind of inquisitive nigga. I wanted to know. Man, show me when, where, and how to make these things happen. So, you know, I guess I'm saying all that to say that, you know, Gilly and Wallow is absolutely right about what they're saying when, when, when they're saying put some protection on your ass. You know what I mean? Your ass is valuable enough to put some protection on it. And some of y'all are going to do what you want to do. So I ain't going to tell you don't do this, don't do that. But I am going to tell you put some protection on your ass. You know what I mean? Your objective should be to make it home to your family, your woman, or whatever every day you leave out the house. You have to think that way. You know what I mean? And you can't embrace these clowns. You know what I mean? Because a a nigga that don't know how to think is a dangerous man. You know what I mean? And that's what we're dealing with with this conversation that we're having right now. You know, a nigga that don't know how to think is a dangerous man. He... A man that feel like every altercation have to be have to end with violence, he's a dangerous man. He's a damn fool, and it's a matter of time before he meet a damn fool. You know what I mean? And the ending going to be bad. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're dealing with. And, and if there's anything that needs to change, is, man, it, leave them damn fools in the hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all know... The ones that's damn fools before you even bring them out to lead them in the hood because all the muscle and meanness and all that fighting shit in the world ain't nothing, man. You know what I mean? When it when it comes to a thinker. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That little man, you were five two and a whole lot of little nigga, you can't impose no muscle. I used to specialize in that shit. Hit me, big nigga, <laughs> so I can deal with your ass. You know what I mean? So you have to like understand that we ain't Niggas ain't thinking about fighting you no more. So get the right security, man. And, That's all and the I'm reason to say. the reason I always stress security is because I understand you got some real niggas from around your neighborhood that might they might they might be real real with all the dumb shit. But when situations come, they might be looking at somebody as an op or opposition, and that's not even the case. It could be something that could be de-escalated, and that's what the professionals is there for. You know, when I'm talking about security, I'm talking about real live professionals. You got professional, you know, teams out here that will handle your business for you. And you got to understand this, and I try to stress this to a lot of artists. You're not boo-boo from around the way no more. You're a business. You're paying taxes. You're LLC. You're a business, bro. So you got to carry yourself like that. And I just think a lot of times that money come and motherfuckers just lose their mind. Yeah. And like I always tell people, man, and, and, I, and I tell these cats, because I ain't, listen, man, I ain't, a lot of these cats that do these young cats, I'm not your peer, man. I'm your fucking elder, man. Hmm. And I'm not trying to be an old nigga that's trying to be a young nigga. That's the problem that we got now. And that's why a lot of these young cats don't respect the older generation. Because motherfuckers trying to relive their second childhood. I'm your elder nephew. So I'm going to sprinkle this game on you properly. I'm not no motherfucking nigga that, you know, this out here was a nigga getting high, doing some dumb shit. Nigga, I spent 20 years in the penitentiary. That shit was real. That wasn't no motherfucking game. And y'all, you know, so for me to see a young cat running around here that got unbelievable opportunities, you niggas is making more money than Tupac, Biggie, put all of them together. Hmm. Y'all make more money than them, you know, 
in these bookings y'all be doing in these te- like come on man y'all make a shitload of money and I'm talking about on show type money take advantage of that shit and don't finesse yourself out of your blessings I know y'all done seen me talk to different people but you know like I told Pooh free Pooh Shiesty I told him man don't disrespect your blessings hmm. do not disrespect your blessings don't be out here with that tough shit man that born to lose shit and you got millions of dollars in the bank I don't know how much I'm going to keep stressing this shit, man. Because a lot of times, the homies and the so-called OGs ain't telling you this because now you're the money train. And I got to say this. You got to protect the king or you're going back to the porch. It was a rapper named Skrilla said that. Hmm. And when I say that, all these brothers that fall, they drop, they homies got to go back to the porch. They back on the fucking block now. Because y'all ain't know that. Y'all wasn't smart enough to protect the king. You protect the king when you make sure you're not doing no dumb shit. Because when you doing dumb shit, it's going to affect them. Rather you doing these shows, fucking whatever it is, promote. I'm talking about whatever you going through these cities, as soon as you do some dumb shit, that shit fall on artists. Because they want to lock him up first. They ain't trying to lock you up. Police, DAs, they already, they want that rep. They chasing rep. They trying to get popping too. They, they want, they, you don't even dig it. They want, they, DAs want they Instagram popping too. Huh? Fuck time y'all think is going on. Yeah. They want they Instagram to pop. You got motherfucking police officers. They want they fucking grand to pop. Yeah, lock what's name up. So you just got to be mindful when you operate and you getting that money because listen, man, everybody not happy for you. You got to understand, you motherfuckers going to Rodeo Drive and Ball Harbor and, and Lenox Mall. Y'all spending with a motherfucker making a year and one one visit. So everybody not happy for you. But I'm just saying, enjoy your life, enjoy your success, take care of your families. And lay off the dumb shit, man. And the bottom line is, right, you work so motherfucking hard to get everything you got, and then you could lose all of that shit in one night. One night. No, fuck one night. In, in Five minutes. One minute. One minute. Mm-hmm. A gun Two go, minutes. Gun go off in one. You boom. feel what I'm saying? Like one, one night of some liquor, some pills, some disagreements, some arguments. A nigga like Tory Lanez is sitting in jail. One of the most talented artists in the motherfucking world. One fucking five, 10, 20 minutes, that shit have changed your whole fucking life, man. And let me say this too. I got I got Did you go from having everything to having nothing? I gotta elaborate on this. We live in a different time. Niggas is not playing by the United States of America Street Code Man you no more. That shit out the door. That's out the door. A motherfucker would tell on you, man. The same motherfucker, shit. same motherfucker that was in the sandbox with you, <laughs> they would tell on your motherfucking ass. Just tell on you fast as shit, man. They would get right on the stand, and your mom would be in the courtroom sitting right behind you crying, and they grew up, they ate out of your mom's motherfucking house because your mom might have been on drugs. They would get on that motherfucking stand and tell on you, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're witnessing that all over the world right they now. Would, they would light your ass up and go back out here, and guess what's going to happen? The chick still going to kick it with them? If yeah. they can make some move, these so-called Nick Rose that you think is real niggas gonna fuck with him. Mm-hmm. He ain't right on me. So the game, like, go ahead and re- figure some new shit out. Yeah, you know what? I just thought about a, uh, another answer to that question you asked me, Gilly, about uh, what other than the homie. You know, it's a hell of a thing to have access to power and not use it. And when I think about the machine. My homie P them got out there in, in Atlanta. You know what I mean? I went, you know, we flew to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I talked with the homie head up. I talked to Quavo head up. You know what I mean? Since this situation happened. And that's power. And, and what I'm thinking about right now is I would have loved to have seen somebody with his team here with Quavo versus you know what I mean? One of them other people, man, that don't know how to think. So if you got access to power, it's important to use that access. A lot of times, you know, we evolve in different things and don't understand the value of different situations because you ain't from there. You know what I mean? And money don't make you be from there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just You can have a billion dollars and not have 
that street cred or, or, or the knowledge and different things because you ain't live that. Right. You won't see different things coming. You, you, it'll hit you straight, right smack in the goddamn center of the head and you won't never see it coming because you ain't been trained, you know what I mean, to even see that coming. But when you have access to the power, to the machine, use it. You know what I mean? Use it because it makes a difference. You'll make it home. At night, you know what I mean? And that's what's important. That's the only thing that's important. Yeah. It's making it home at night. And I want to say this, man, like, we some extraordinary people, man. We doing some extraordinary things out here. Um, and, and we got some in hip-hop culture. This is the 50th year of hip-hop. And we all eating off of that. So let's respect what created this opportunity for us and protect it. You got so many different ways they coming at this shit, man. The court and they coming at this shit in the courtroom, utilizing lyrics. So you even got to be mindful of the shit you say, even if you expressing. You know, you can't even. It's to the point where it's though sometimes we can't even use our imagination because some of our greatest artists in the history of life, they was poets. They wasn't real street niggas. They put that shit together. So you even got to be mindful of that. You got to be mindful of what you're posting. You you can't show you, you can't show everything. Quit telling on yourself, niggas. That's what he that's what he telling you. Know, y'all. You, you dig what I'm saying? Because you know it go from you posting something to now you know prosecutor talking about on December uh, 27, two thousand and twenty one, uh, rapper so and so was uh, posing with marijuana in the AK forty seven on Instagram. They can subpoena Instagram. Everything you post on Instagram, no matter you delete it, archive, they will subpoena Instagram and they will give them your whole, everything you ever posted, everything you ever deleted. They can subpoena every social media network that's out there. Stop slipping, man. Take advantage of these blessings you got and take care of you and yours, man. Uh, and I just want to say, uh, once again, condolence to the whole quality control, uh, mm-hmm. take all family, Atlanta, you know, because this was a, a terrible loss for our culture. We keep losing artists to a lot of senseless, I'm talking about some dumb shit. Dumb shit. We got we to gotta really protect this uh, beautiful art that's uh, giving us opportunities to take care of the people that we love the most and really shake up the world. You know, that's all I got to say. I mean, I think I think we, we touched on everything. You know what I mean? I think... Uh, you guys wanted to speak y'all truths, and um, I think y'all came on here and you know did that. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, no, it was beautiful. It you was know, beautiful. I just wanted you know send my condolences once again to the family, the friends, Quality Control, Quavo, Offset. You know what I mean? And, and tell y'all, hold y'all heads. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just send our send our condolences from the whole million dollars worth of game. And and, and to all the families of uh, all, all the victims, all, all, all the artists that lost their life. My young boy, PNB Rock, Young Dolph, Mo3, XXX, and Cinchion. Everybody, man, that, you know. Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke. The list goes on. Everybody that lost Nipsey their life. Also. Nipsey. Uh, you know what I mean? We, you know, we just got to get better, man, at this shit, man. You know, and I just hope that uh, tomorrow is better than yesterday. Y'all got any last things y'all want to say before we get out of here? Man, <clears throat> I just hope that this is a situation where we can clear the air. But also give gain to future problems that could transpire in the same manner. But just to also let the family know that, yeah, I love is the, um, if it was a way that we could have prevented this situation, we would have prevented it by all means. Like, which we attempted to do. But, yeah, it's an unfortunate situation, and 
our condolences are with the family. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, yeah, most definitely, you know, I was sincere condolences with the family, you know what I'm saying? And 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 I'm just I'm just reflecting back to where it's a saying that your character precedes you, you know, and I'm not going to say everything was negative, you know, in response to this situation. You know what I'm saying? When a person know your character, then it speaks for itself. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I wasn't misidentified only by those that didn't know, didn't know me and just went with whatever the media was. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that know my character knew, like, Uncle, we seen you was trying to, you know what I'm saying, kill that, whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I stand on that even with my family. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, we're not those type of people. You know what I'm saying? We're God-fearing people, but we stand on respect. You know what I'm saying? Me coming and going. You know, and, you know, you can only sit back and allow so much. And that's just the humble side of us. You know, um, and we've been very humble and respectful with this situation. And any part of this situation that has been misidentified, even from us doing the memorial, then we apologize for that if that was perceived and took wrong. You know what I'm saying? But we never come in nothing with bad intentions when it's dealing with us and family and associates. You know what I'm saying? That's why we speak about relationships. You know what I'm saying? I mean, not no slick check-in, not no undercover extortion. Y'all don't have enough for us to ask for it. You know what I'm saying? So it's never been that. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's really personal relationships that we have with many. And bro been in this thing for 30-some years. And that's just in the entertainment side of it. So you know how far those relationships go. Right. Generations. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have other busters that speak against this. But good game, you know what I'm saying? You know, you let the lane be the lane. You know what I'm saying? Don't you change to your truth. Yeah. Yeah, to the homie Quavo. Ain't nothing changed <clears throat> where my love is concerned, where Quavo is concerned. So, you know, they're going to come a day there's going to come a time that everything we saying, Quavo going to have the opportunity to bear witness that this is the truth. You know what I mean? This is how it went down and from A to Z. And I look forward to uh, seeing that day. But even more important than that, you know, like I told him the last time I saw him, you know what I mean? It's, it's love here. You know, it's love here. And, uh, I look forward to that uh, coming back together soon. But uh, it's offset, dude. I ain't gonna leave him out. You know, I'm just real like this, you know, because, you know, you know, niggas be throwing rocks and hiding their hand, right? They be throwing rocks and hiding their hand. And uh, I don't like them kind of individuals, you know. And, and the truth of the matter is, you know, one can can dance and different things in front of these different cameras and, and all that kind of shit. And, and, re, and, and when reality, the truth of the matter is, you know, nigga, you wasn't really right there with takeoff when he was alive. You know what I mean? So for you to be taking these positions that you taking, you know what I mean? And I, I got people everywhere. So I hear all kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to just say this to you. Uh, don't never put me in no position where, you know, I have to defend myself. You know what I mean? That wouldn't be healthy for you. And, you know, I, I have to say that. I hate, but it's a million dollars worth of game. You know what I mean? It's a million dollars worth of game, and I'm going to give it to him right on a million dollars worth of game because I ain't going to throw rocks and hide my hand. I'm going to just let it be known, you know, to him because I hear What's being said, and uh, it's all love after that. Peace. Well, it's just like that. Right.